Hi, welcome to the McGuffey Reader's Online Tutor. Today's lesson is from the McGuffey's First Eclectic Reader, the Revised Edition, and we will be reading prose today, prose from Lesson 61, Lesson 61, Twelve Little Chicks, Part 1. Twelve Little Chicks, Part 1. Let's read the lesson. There was once a big white hen that had twelve little chickens. They were very small, and the old hen took care of them. She found food for them in the daytime, and at night kept them under her wings. One day this old hen took her chickens down to a small brook. She thought the air from the water would do them good. When they got to the brook, they walked on the bank a little while. It was very pretty on the other side of the brook, and the old hen thought she would take her children over there. There was a large stone in the brook. She thought it would be easy for them to jump to that stone, and from it to the other side. So she jumped to the stone and told the children to come after her. For the first time, she found that they would not obey her. She flapped her wings and cried, Come here, all of you! Jump upon this stone, as I did. We can then jump to the other side. Come now! Oh, mother, we can't, we can't, we can't, said all the little chickens. Yes, you can, if you try, said the old hen. Just flap your wings as I did, and you can jump over. I am flapping my wings, said Chippy, who stood by himself, but I can't jump any better than I could before. Well, that was part one. Let's read it again, but this time we'll read it together. I'll put up the text. Here we go. There was once a big white hen that had twelve little chickens. They were very small, and the old hen took good care of them. She found food for them in the daytime, and at night she kept them under her wings. One day this old hen took her chickens down to a small brook. She thought the air from the water would do them good. When they got to the brook, they walked on the bank a little while. It was very pretty on the other side of the brook, and the old hen thought she would take her children over there. There was a large stone in the brook. She thought it would be easy for them to jump to that stone, and from it to the other side. So she jumped to the stone and told the children to come after her. For the first time, she found that they would not obey her. She flapped her wings and cried, Come here, all of you! Jump upon this stone as I did. We can then jump to the other side. Come now! Oh, mother, we can't! We can't! We can't! said all the little chickens. Yes, you can, if you try, said the old hen. Just flap your wings, as I did, and you can jump over. I am flapping my wings, said Chippy, who stood by himself. But I can't jump any better than I could before. Let's look at the new vocabulary words that go along with this lesson. We have stood, himself, flapping, first, twelve, flapped, walked, flap, obey, better, chippy, food, stone, before, chickens, kept. Let's clap through the one-syllable words. Here we go. Stood, first, twelve, flapped, walked, 
flop, food, stone, kept. And the two syllable words, himself, flapping, obey, better, chippy, before, chickens. We have quite a few two syllable words. And let's look at the long vocal sounds. Remember, the long vocal sounds are long vowel sounds. They just last a li little bit longer when you're pronouncing them than the short vocal sounds. And we have that aw sound in walked. And the long o sound, o in stone. And also in before. We have the long double o sound in food. And then we have those vowel sounds that last a bit shorter. They're called short vocals. And we have that short A in flap and flapped. We have the short vocal E sound in 12. And also in the word better. And also in the word kept. We have that short I vocal sound, the I sound in chippy, chickens, and also in the word himself, the I sound in himself. We have the short double O in stood, stood. And we have no diphthongs in this lesson, but we do have some substitutes. And remember that substitutes are letters that substitute other letters' sounds, the sounds of other letters. We have the, the I that substitutes the E in first, and we have the E that substitutes the long A sound in obey. We also have that Y at the end of chippy that makes the uh, short I sound or the long E sound, chippy or chippy. Then we have the S at the end of chickens that sounds like a Z, chickens. And then let's look at our aspirates today. Remember, aspirates release a puff of breath when you pronounce them. These are consonant sounds, and they release a puff of breath if you put your hand in front of your mouth when you pronounce them, like the S and the T in stood, stood. The D shouldn't uh, release a puff of breath. We have the H, the S, and the F in himself, and the F and P in flapped, flapping, flap. The F, the S, and the T in first. The T in twelve. The K in walked. The T in better. Then we have the CH and also the P in chippy or chippy. We have the F in food. The S and T in stone. The F in before. Not the B. Before. The S and T in stone. The CH and the CK in chickens. The K, the P, and the T in kept. And don't confuse the aspirates that release the puff of breath when you pronounce them to the subvocals that are mouthed but not spoken. So they do not release that breath. They are mouthed but not spoken. So that's the difference between the D and the B or the P and the B and the D and the T. Like the D and stood, no breath is released. The M and the L in himself, or the L and the NG in flapping, the R in first, the W, the L, and the V in twelve, 
the L in flap. The B in obey. The B and the R in better. The D in food. The N in stone. The B and the R in before. And the N and S is Z in chickens. Now let's, those are the subvocals. Now let's read the story one more time. You can even turn down the volume and try to read it for yourself. And don't forget about the full stop, the comma, the semicolon, the exclamation mark, the interrogation mark or the question mark, and the quotation marks. Here we go. There was once a big white hen that had twelve little chickens. They were very small and the old hen took good care of them. She found food for them in the daytime and at night kept them under her wings. One day this old hen took her chickens down to a small brook she thought the air from the water would do them good. When they got to the brook, they walked on the bank a little while. It was very pretty on the other side of the brook. And the old hen thought she would take her children over there. There was a large stone in the brook. She thought it would be easy for them to jump to that stone and from it to the other side. So she jumped to the stone and told the children to come after her. For the first time she found that they would not obey her. She flapped her wings and cried, Come here! All of you, jump upon this stone as I did. We can then jump to the other side. Come now. Oh, mother, we can't, we can't, we can't, said all the little chickens. Yes, you can, if you try, said the old hen. Just flap your wings, as I did, and you can jump over. I am flapping my wings, said Chippy, who stood by himself. But I can't jump any better than I could before. Well, that's the end of this half of the lesson. And I hope that you visit me again for part two of the 12 little chickens. And I hope that you go to the mcgeffyreaders.blogspot.com for more lesson and worksheets. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.